My name is Jason Fulford, and Eric Garner was my cousin. I can't breathe! 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 I heard about George Floyd's death when I was scrolling through my social media. It was the day it happened, and I believe the video was just released. And automatically, I'm like, oh my gosh. It was such a similar case to my cousins that I kind of just wanted to know, like, is this real? Like, can this really happen or have happened again? Eric grew up in the building that my grandparents lived in at the time, the Gowanus housing projects. Eric had such a huge heart. He was a person, if he could help you, he would. And I miss his hugs, you know? I wish he was around to give the world a hug right now. When Eric was murdered, it was hard because I found out through social media. I had actually just landed in Puerto Rico for a wedding that I was gonna be attending. And uh, I just saw it and no preparation, uh, you know, because uh, family hadn't reached out yet, just yet, and it started going viral because it was filmed, you know. I just remember my heart sinking. I kind of was like, no, there's, there's no way this could be Eric. Like, not, not, not my cousin Eric. I just felt so deflated as a black man in America. I've been a person that's been taught to love everyone, but uh, the harsh reality, man, is that everybody don't love you back. Eric deserves to be here right now. There are people that commit mass murders that are cuffed with not one bruise on them. And my cousin needed to die that day? They didn't, there wasn't a value for his life that day. I can't breathe still, you know? I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I mean, at that time, I was going to a lot of the protests. I was happy that it was a catalyst, you know, and it was something that could bring people together to, to stand for something that was right. But I feel like it wound up kind of not being as productive as it could be. After that happened and being so public, something should have made sure that that doesn't happen to anyone else. Where we're at right now in our world and in recent incidents, especially with George Floyd, what's really changing? I'm gonna tell you what really hurt, you know? An image started circulating. Uh, like it wasn't the video, it was just the image of the officer kneeled on George and the look on that officer's face. It haunts me right now. And I feel like it should haunt our country that someone that could feel that comfortable to do that to someone. To me, that picture is worth more than any other history lesson we can have right now because that picture says it all. And if those officers do not do the time that they deserve, it's gonna send the world a message that we're not holding our officers to the same accountability that we are holding civilians to. It's something that should have been avoided because of my cousin, you know, and how it was for the world to see what happened to my cousin. And now we're seeing it kind of an escalated version it happened to another black man we, we all should not be able to stomach that. For six years to go by, and that to be the message that we are sending out to our, everyone, especially my people, shame, it's a shame. Well, I do feel like a lot more people felt they needed to get out because it happened again. What I feel about that is why, you know? Why weren't we all out here, you know, the first time? 
The thing that is hard for me as being a part of Eric's family is that you have to relive that almost every time you open up social media. Like, I'm not always ready for that. The image of Eric being held down is extremely triggering for me. It makes me shake, makes me feel nauseous, makes me relive that moment. And I am not okay. When you're thrown into that spotlight, I think it makes you not be able to grieve. You kind of have to still be on your best behavior even when you're grieving, even when you're upset, or else you come off as this angry black man or angry black woman. But it's like, no, like I'm hurting and I should be allowed to hurt the way I need to hurt right now. When you can't grieve, I feel like that trauma lasts a lot longer. And that's why I'm actually not um, going to any protests right now because I don't want to be triggered and do something that I would regret and then not be able to share my voice, not be able to share my love. It takes a lot of strength. The advice I would give George Floyd's family right now is to stay as strong as they can, lead this fight, but also be willing to let others lead and take a part of that burden from them and fight for a cause and something that will be everlasting and that can have an impact on people that where acts like this just will not happen again. And not only acts like this, but use this as a vehicle to change a lot of the injustices that we have in our society. I think what they need to understand is there's a huge following behind them. There's so many people that have their back. And they will receive the support that they need, you know? And uh, they're gonna see how much light there can be in sharing some of the good that George brought to this world. And I've seen pictures of him smiling, and I know there's a George in there that the world would have loved to know. He is shining a light right now and saying this needs to change, just like my cousin did at that moment. Running has become my therapy. It's become my outlet. When I run, I kind of want to get lost. The reason I organize the runs for Eric is because I want to be someone who puts a positive spin on what's been done to Eric. So last year, I organized with Power Malu. He started the Run for Justice. So I reached out to him and I'm like, you know, can we kind of highlight Eric and it be around the time when he was murdered in July. I wanted people to hear our voice and just know that we're gonna continue our fight for justice. I tell myself all the time, let me go the extra mile for Eric. The extra mile in everything that I do.